share the Internet Explorer to have both the transcription and the speaking. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Does this doesn't work, right? Or does it? Do you hear this? Or it's very soft, maybe. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're just trying to get organized here. Uh, uh, please find your seats. Uh, I've asked the speakers to just take a seat near a microphone. Uh, if you're not a speaker and a speaker asks you to uh, make some space, please do. Uh, otherwise, the plan is to start uh, very shortly. Uh, I have a little, uh, a short overview to, to kick off because this dynamic coalition that has been going on since 2008 uh, always sees new faces in the room. So I'd really like to, to, to give a short overview of where we are. Uh, after that, uh, Avri Doria, uh, our distinguished moderator sitting in the middle, uh, will take over and, and uh, invite the speakers to contribute uh, one by one. Good morning. This is a speaker, so great if you can get a microphone. And I'll remind people, we uh, only have an hour. And we only have an hour, so we're also going to start. Ah, Adam, could you sit there? I'm sorry, could you leave that to... Uh, Good, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, can you help? Uh, can I change the slides from here or can you need to do it from there? Would you, would you be willing to help? Uh, for changing the slides, how do we do? Okay, uh, well, thank you very much. As I don't have eyes in the back of my head, I'll look at here too. So welcome to this uh, meeting of the Dynamic Coalition on Internet of Things. Uh, it's bringing together stakeholders from all over the world to engage in the dialogue on good practice from a global perspective, from a multi-stakeholder perspective. And uh, in bottom line, it's intent to find a realistic and ethical way forward. So the next slides. Um, IoT is really a balance. And uh, it's important to consider both sides. There's benefits and there's challenges. We need new technologies to bring us way to respond to today's challenges, uh, challenges that partly never existed before. And it comes with new challenges. And uh, just a reminder that technologies in itself are not what is good or bad, it's the way we use it. So these uh, principles are underpinning our thinking thinking. Uh, the presentation, by the way, is also available from the IGF uh, website, so you can download it. Uh, you find a couple of uh, uh, indications of well, what kind of applications we have uh, and are developing and what the challenges are in that. If you go to the next one, uh, particularly for uh, the IGF context, it's good to look at those challenges. If you look from a global perspective, uh, for instance, at the uh, uh, sustainable development goals that uh, uh, are uh, formulated at UN level, in which it's recognized that connected technologies are a necessity to address multiple sustainable uh, uh, challenges in a doable way. Uh, but it also requires sharing global knowledge and to know what we want, uh, global dialogue. Next one. There's a lot of applications, uh, ranging from uh, industry uh, applications, uh, application in industry just because it makes sense and technology helps to improve processes, quality of, of processes, speed of processes, costs of processes. But also, uh, for instance, the, 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 the nice floating thing in the water is a uh, tsunami buoy, uh, warning systems for uh, natural disasters, next to it earthquake prediction. Uh, uh, the management of infrastructures, uh, but also in the home, 
uh, ranging from the quality of the air to uh, assisted technologies for uh, longer independent living. Uh, but also in agriculture, uh, a lot of this uh, is in use. Uh, all kind of monitoring systems and so much more. Uh, the cars, uh, the session before this was about smart cities, which in a way is a big uh, IoT enabled ecosystem uh, as well. So what does the Dynamic Coalition do on the next slide uh, and the next slide? So how do we look at IoT? Uh, for us, it's merely a specific aspect of the internet. Uh, like social media has shaped the internet in different ways than it used to be before, uh, so does the Internet of Things. And it has specific characteristics that will co-determine the development of future networks. And in particular, it's on uh, collecting, storing, providing access to many data related to observation by sensors, uh, but also uh, networks, autonomous or triggered by people with actuators take action following receipt of specific data uh, or according and according to pre-programmed decision models, uh, uh, more and more possibly towards the future uh, AI uh, enabled. Uh, another specific element that has come up very much during the last year and, and uh, slightly less visible already before is the weaponization of uh, Internet of Things, uh, for instance, using uh, devices out there, not to attack the device itself, but to use it to attack others and do denial of service attacks. The Dynamic Coalition on the next slide uh, started in 2008 and is active ever, uh, both in IGF but also in intermediate regional meetings. And uh, as said, the aim is to share that, uh, to develop that shared understanding. Uh, most IoT dialogues around the world, because there's many, they take place with specific focus, sometimes with uh, single stakeholders, sometimes in, in specific regions. Uh, but in the, the, this is the only place where uh, multiple stakeholders uh, from all over the world truly meet on equal terms. Uh, the interests are ours, not mine or yours. Uh, what we developed over time uh, is the principle on the next slide, slide eight. The Internet of Things good practice aims at developing IoT systems, products and services, taking ethical considerations into account from the outset, both in the development, deployment and use phases of the life cycle, thus to find the ethical and sustainable way ahead using IoT to help it create a free, secure and enabling rights-based environment, a future we want. Um, next slide. In summary, uh, the paper, this is also online. You can find it again via the agenda. It's about embracing IoT to address societal challenges in an ethical way. We need IoT. It's to create an IoT environment that encourages investments. Uh, we need all stakeholders on board. We need to create an ecosystem that works. Um, and for this, awareness and, and uh, a channel for feedback is important. Uh, it's important to have legal clarity. Uh, some people say, don't regulate. Uh, uh, we all know that regulation is already out there. And partly it also applies to the internet and we don't always understand why, so we need to get clarity there and review the legal mechanisms in light of the new possibilities. Uh, and uh, very important to ensure the emergence, not just of an IoT environment, but an envi IoT environment we can trust. Trust is never perfect, but it should be good enough for us to want to use it. Uh, and uh, the thinking so far means that uh, this leads to meaningful transparency. We can understand what happens, clear accountability. We know who's responsible for it and real choice. So then the next one, focus of today's session. Over the last year, since uh, last IGF, uh, security has come up very strongly and uh, strengthening the security paragraph uh, has been important. For those who've been following the DC before, you may have seen the updated document to reflect some of that. Very interested in your take on that. 
Uh, and please remember, it's about what's necessary from a user perspective, but also what's doable from a business and technology perspective, and uh, what role for governments in helping to ensure a healthy balance here. Uh, and the second thing, uh, last but not least, this uh, DC has been driven by volunteers from the outset, uh, and that is great, because we've been able to come to a balanced view which is not uh, focused on, on any single stakeholder's uh, uh, perspective. At the same time, it means that uh, the impact is also limited in how we get out there. For that, we need to have the support of institutional players uh, that believe that this makes sense. We don't pretend this is the answer to everything, but we do pretend it's good guidance for any specific uh, uh, further good practice implementation in specific areas. Uh, the call at the end of this meeting will also be to volunteer for working groups on two specific aspects. That's the slide 11. Um, one of the things is so an ethical approach, what is that? There's a lot of work on that. Uh, UNESCO, uh, World Economic Forum, uh, industry players, uh, other NGOs. Uh, it's important for us, I think, to take stock and to what et ethical approaches are there and how we can benefit from it. Uh, we'll ask uh, uh, you to volunteer for that. And uh, we've talked with uh, Adam, and Adam will be happy to, to, to help with that too, right? Uh, Adam is from the World Economic Forum, one of our speakers. Uh, the other thing is to do a sim similar thing on contemporary work on securing IoT. A lot of that is happening, so a high-level view. And we're not talking about in-depth 60-page academic papers. We talk about that overview. Uh, and for securing IoT, a longer way forward. And uh, Frederic, uh, and I told Frederic is from Internet Society. They do a lot of work on this, and Frederic will tell more on that. But he's also happy to help uh, a couple of volunteers to, to, to get here on that uh, uh, high-level paper, so appreciate it. So with that, and um, with the full understanding in the next slide that we create the world tomorrow with the choices and actions of today, I hand the floor to Avri. Thank you. Um, I'm Avri Doria, I'm moderating. Uh, I had one question for you, Mr. Chair. How long did we give each of our speakers? Uh, we had originally designed it as a 90-minute session, but it's a 60-minute session. So just I was wondering what their expectation, because I want to make sure that we get to a little bit of Q&A of, of the rest of the participants in the room. So how long are we guiding them? The, the guidance was three to five minutes. Three to five. Uh, okay. So I guess keeping it on the, the, the closer to three side, and I'll go with the <laughs> order. Well, if it's three, I've got seven speakers here. That's 21 minutes, et cetera. So, uh, Frederick, I have you first listed first, so if you'd like to start. Thank, thank you, Avery, and I will respect the three minutes. Uh, nice to be here and talk you through um, the, the IoT. Um, so I work with the Internet Society, and we are leading, as, as Martin just said, um, a big campaign on IoT security and privacy. We are also impressed by the fact that we're talking about 20 billions. And that is one of the more conservative figures I've seen recently. Uh, I appreciate, by the way, that nobody talking in this room about smart device. I could not hear this expression anymore because there are just dumb devices. They are connected to something which is smart elsewhere. And this is an issue. Those 20 billion dumb devices are connected to the Internet and transmitting all day, I mean, all second information. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about, the Internet. So what are the, what are the issues? Um, there are so many issues that I can see. First is... Um, manufacturers are rushing um, 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 device on the market, um, selling them with very poor privacy and, um, and security embedded. There are no incentive for manufacturers to put privacy and security uh, on the economic level. Uh, those uh, they, those uh, devices, as I just said, are connecting zillion of different information and data and transmitting those. Some of them we just don't know that they are transmitting. Um, the information consumers is a figure. Uh, I got figures showing that 59% of IoT devices fail to adequately explain to customers how their personal information are collected, used, and disclosed, just to give an example. 
And last but not least, most of the manufacturers in these fields are new to the IoT market. Those are usual manufacturers who were producing fridge or plastic dolls for, for kids, and now they squeeze um, wake up call. They squeeze um, uh, a chips in it, and it becomes a connected device. So that's the reason why we feel in the society that we, we we really should tackle this because, as you know, everything you put on the internet becomes part of the internet. Um, and and the risks, of course, are are very well known: um, the data compromission, compromise or surveillance, uh, physical risk. Remember, just to take one. I don't want to scare you, uh, uh, but there was this uh, denial of service attack in Finland where two buildings were seeing their own eating being just put to zero when it was freezing out there, when there was physical risk for people. And of course, the botnet attack, that would allow me also to talk about inward versus outward security. I mean, people might just be concerned about the fact that if you put your toaster on the internet, someone might play with it and burn your fingers. That is inward security. But more important for us is the outward part of the security, and that is they might use your toaster as part of a huge uh, denial of service attack using 100,000 of uh, mm -hmm. other toasters like it happened with the Mira botnet. Um, so what do we propose? Uh, Honestly, we believe that security is a collective affair. This is a collective, a collaborative process. Because we don't believe that just regulation is a silver bullet or just to rush to manufacturers as the end of the top of iceberg would be a solution. So we believe we should address this in a wide way with different manufacturers. For the manufacturers, we come up with our online trust alliance uh, principles. Those are 40 principles from authentication to encryption, etc that for us, if manufacturers will follow those principles we're producing uh, their device, we would limit up to 95% all the risks that I just mentioned. That would be for manufacturers on uh, um, a voluntary basis. OTA, remember this name. Policymakers, we came up the Internet Society, I got also different proposals for policymakers to embed into their approach, not specifically regulation, policymakers can create an environment for security. But the outcome also can make clear who is liable in terms of failures. So there is a lot of recommendation that we have for policymakers. One of the last one would to give consumer trust, as you mentioned, and that's what we call Trustmark. Pay attention, Trustmark is a very complex issue. It's just not a label that you put on a carpet. It's much more complicated, but we see this as an ultimate goal, one of those who might just give consumer trust. Avri, I took three minutes, but I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you. I think we'll save the questions for the end, otherwise we may not get to, to all the speakers and all the questions. The next one I have on the list is Ed and Katz, please. Hi. Um, uh, I'm from the World Economic Forum, uh, the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution based in San Francisco. Uh, let me uh, explain a little bit about how it's structured. We have different project teams, one of which is uh, on Internet of Things and Smart Cities, and uh, I was working with, I'm on the data policy team, but was working with that team on a set of principles in regards to the industrial IoT safety and security protocol. Since I have three minutes, I will refer you to that on the internet, um, uh, the IoT safety and security protocol from the World Economic Forum. Um, what we've done with our protocol design networks uh, is bring together a multi-stakeholder set of, um, uh, of groups, in particular for this group, uh, a network of experts from the finance industry, technology companies, electronics manufacturers, uh, uh, members of the DCIOT, and Martin uh, contributed a great deal in this, while in draft last year at IGF was distributed uh, on the mailing list. Uh, government representatives, standard setting bodies, uh, I I industry associations, and entities deploying IoT systems. Um, I'd like to share some of the observations about uh, the agile governance that we're trying to um, uh, uh, approach this with in regards to what the dynamics are. Uh, shared responsibility is the theme because this is actually not on the regulatory level. This is uh, um, uh, it, it adopted of voluntary standards. So the fact that the cyber physical environment is very different and, and there's a decentralized interconnectedness is a, is a key factor. Uh, the distributed risk exposure um, is, uh, is an important 
uh, factor in trying to understand the liability. Um, and uh, the risk mitigation challenges uh, are why we turn to the insurance industry uh, as a major part of this, um, this uh, endeavor so that the cybersecurity best practices that were developed uh, as part of this protocol would be uh, taken on by the insurance in industry so that entities deploying IoT uh, uh, systems would, while abiding by the cybersecurity best practices, would qualify for uh, insurance or for a discount uh, on that insurance. That's the mechanism. Uh, our experience so far, since this was published, uh, uh, though still an ongoing thing in April, um, is that uh, taking a lead within the insurance industry has been somewhat challenging. Um, and, and while we've had some positive experiences and are now uh, getting off the ground um, uh, with some particular in, in insurance uh, entities that are interested in adopting this, uh, it has been difficult. Let me then um, just describe the three different areas. Uh, we came up with principles that are in the document and uh, we're hoping over the next few months to try to help incorporate into the IoT uh, good practices. Uh, first section is on line of business device safeguards um, and uh, there are 10 different parts to that and those are what the devices themselves um, should contain from risk assessment models, segmentation, device integrity, and I won't go into all of them. A second set of things is on internal governance and risk management. This focuses on board oversight, top level accountability, um, making sure that the business and security parts of an entity talk to each other, and then record keeping and metrics being the third uh, focus, uh, establishing performance indicators um, that, that, and, and metrics uh, to, to measure that by. And so you can find more on the IoT safety security protocol. I'd be uh, uh, happy to answer questions on the protocol design, our IoT uh, project, and how we can plug better into the Dynamic Coalition in the coming year. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker we have is Taylor Bentley from ICED. Hi, everybody. Bonjour à tous. Um, so yeah, my name is Taylor Bentley. I am from the Economic Ministry in the Government of Canada, uh, Innovation, Science, Economic Development. That's I said. So uh, the story goes back to 2016 with the Mirai botnet. Um, the uh, continued calls since then have all been to ask for more regulation, for more, uh, I guess, uh, frameworks around Internet of Things devices. Uh, these calls and the research that we had um, done to respond to them, you know, came to the conclusion that such a proactive approach would not be consistent with Canada's traditional light-handed approach where we use framework policies and laws of general application to uh, instill the same rights that, uh, and responsibilities that uh, consumers and businesses uh, must uh, exhibit offline as online. So the question was, all right, if uh, we're not going to regulate in this space, how do we pre preempt it? Um, so uh, with that, we were uh, very happy to enter into a partnership with the Internet Society, um, with CIRA, the .ca operator, uh, CIPIC, which is a, a law clinic in the University of Ottawa, and Canary, which is the Canadian Academic Research Network for a Canadian multi-stakeholder process on enhancing IoT security. So I, IoT security 2018.ca, by the way. So um, how, where to start? Um, we tried to start with definitions, and that was fruitless. Um, and then we started with what's already been done. Um, and the thing is that there is quite a bit. Um, if you know anything about Canada, you know that uh, we have lots of internet use. We have lots of uh, prolific internet users, but um, like most places, consumers are generally not uh, informed or are not prioritizing security and, and privacy concerns. Um, businesses are 90% small, medium-sized enterprises who also uh, struggle to demonstrate basic uh, cyber resilience. So. We have a plethora of resources, both on, for the consumers and for businesses, but how to navigate between them, uh, how to advise what is the best approach, both um, when businesses or consumers are adopting uh, smart solutions or uh, Internet of Things solutions. So it's about reducing risks. It's about ensuring innovation and adoption, ultimately ensuring trust. 
So there are three working groups, consumer education and awareness, which has developed a shared responsibility framework for devices. It focuses on key messages on IoT that would be delivered both to consumers, so indicating the key behaviors that we'd like to see from consumers, but then also the supply side of that. So how can government, standards-making organizations, international organizations, civil society, et cetera, and businesses, manufacturers, how can they support those behaviors? The other working group on labeling and standards has outlined considerations of a labeling and standard scheme for IoT devices, um, including a lot of work highlighting work done by the CSA, the Canadian Standards Association, on a new standard. Um, so a big part of this is going to be uh, also providing guidance on how businesses can consider this uh, sea of standards and how they might be able to, oh, thank you, um, and how they may be able to navigate. The um, final is the Network Resilience Working Group, which is fleshing out recommendations for network level defense defenses that operators can implement now. Because while we talk uh, and have a lot of good ideas about design level improvements, um, I think we have a lot of ISPs and network managers um, that can do a lot of good work now. So uh, we need to sift through and uh, help everyone reduce the risks and get the kind of social and economic benefits that we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next I have is Claudia. Sally. And from AT&T, so please. Indeed. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ari and Martin, for having me here um, today um, with you. So as Ari said, I'm from uh, AT&T. And uh, of course, at AT&T, we're looking um, a lot um, to creating a business solution and a state local solution to um, provide our business enterprise uh, users uh, a global and seamless uh, experience, because they, we are connected, our clients, wherever they are. and. Uh, uh, we have 48 uh, million devices connected to uh, the internet as of the third quarter of 2018 and we have um, among them for example we are connecting cars and other uh, objects or home solution and this kind of things and the IoT is really the network that is combining the physical device and technology which uh, then enables connectivity that exchange and increased opportunity um, as well for the integration of the physical world to the technology uh, system and the main aim is really uh, to um, cut the costs and so have an economic benefits um, to decrease the human intervention in supporting all of those uh, connected devices but um, as well to increase the experience of the uh, users and consumers uh, and of course uh, you know now that objects uh, are all connected to the internet and are talking to each other they can certainly in, improve our um, lives in, in many ways from the uh, lead and tiny maybe micro um, example of uh, when you wake up and uh, uh, your telephone your alarm clock send uh, the message to the coffee machine and the coffee machine start to brew the coffee and so you can maybe concentrate on mails and other things and be more efficient at work to the more uh, complex example of uh, connected cars uh, and and smart cities where you can really uh, manage uh, you know the traffic and uh, reduce the um, incident uh, and, and as well uh, manage better the infrastructure and we can uh, we, we have plenty of those examples for example you can go to the cargo experience where we uh, um, uh, track basically the merchandise that is being shipped and you can really uh, the business can monitor for example the humidity uh, the, the 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 weather condition and see whether the merchandise is is reaching the end consumers in a good state or whether maybe they need to take another decision and not to deliver the merchandise because it would uh, be a bad uh, probably um, in a bad state but these are just a few examples and I can go and continue on and on uh, with, with the different devices and application and of course to the uptake of these application and, and, and devices what is really key is creating um, an environment that is trusted by the consumers that are using those devices and also where we can protect the privacy as well of our customers and the different governments around the world are really struggling on how to tackle privacy and security 
which are really the main elements uh, to the IoT world uh, and to create a trusted environment. And uh, we are uh, seeing and observing maybe different type of legislation coming up. If you, I'm thinking about Europe or, or, other, uh, or other fora that are talking um, about that. And, um, you know, what I, I really agree with the Fred, what Frederick said, that we really need a collaborative effort. Everybody needs to be around the table to try and find the best solution, which would be also market-led, um, light-touch regulatory approach that um, still protects consumers and, and, and user, and um, technological neutral, and that respect as well international standards. Otherwise, you risk creating a little fortress. And I will stop here because the time is up. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, so yes, I'm Greg Munier from Europol, that's the European Police Agency, I work for the Cybercrime Centre, and I'm also speaking on behalf of uh, my colleague from ENISA, the Cyber Security Agency of, um, of, of the European Union. Um, I will have a different uh, take on this. Uh, we look at uh, IoT security from a victim and, and consumer protection perspective. Um, law enforcement around the world are really busy now um, investigating cases of uh, DDoS attack, uh, we recently, in April uh, 2018, helped the Dutch and the UK to take down a, a website providing DDoS for hire services called uh, webstressor.org. And now we find that the business model of criminals is really to use uh, Mirai-like botnets to um, trigger and to sell a, a, a botnet attack. Uh, we're also are pretty busy working on um, uh, how IoT is being misused by criminals for extortions. So uh, they use IoT uh, uh, poorly protected to spy on people, to steal information, to use uh, um, many different things and, and, and to make money and really to, to, to do victims. And so from that perspective, um, ENISA, for instance, has come up with a number of uh, recommendations. So they call it the Baselam Security Recommendations from IoT. They're very similar to uh, what the Dynamic Coalitions has come up with. Um, they're a bit technical, they're also very common sense type of um, uh, pr proposals. But really the baseline is that um, most of the victims uh, we're looking at are victims because most of the um, IoT devices are very uh, are lacking the, the basic security features. And one of the reasons for that, we believe, and uh, some might call our view simplistic, but we call it common sense, is that there is no legal obligation for security of, of product. If you look at the uh, legislation in terms of product safety, it only applies to physical safety. So you, um, if, if there is direct harm or effect on health, uh, on consumers, um, then uh, there is uh, uh, legislation for that. But it's not clear if a lack of security of connected devices um, that would have an impact on health would actually fall in the scope of uh, EU product safety legislations. Um, the Commission recently has come up with the European Commission with the voluntary uh, certification scheme. We think this is a, a very good step in the right directions, but we believe that it would be probably more efficient if consumer could rely on rules that can be directly enforced. Um, just if I can continue with a few elements of cybersecurity that we would like to promote. Cybersecurity by design, if you put any device and you connect it online, then you need to think about a design cybersecurity strategy. You must anticipate possible vulnerabilities and you need to come up with cybersecurity strategies. Um, a number of simple um, uh, requirements could be if you connect it, you need to have a password. It shouldn't be hard-coded. Hard um, there shouldn't be any manufactured backdoors in it. So these very simple uh, set of requirements we believe would help um, uh, to enhance uh, security. There's, if I can conclude really briefly, there's also a, a very important principle that we would like to promote is the life cycle of, of security. We think that all um, connected objects should be able to be updated regularly, otherwise they are obsolete by default because they expose user to security risk. Um, last but not least, Disconnecting is a cybersecurity feature, we believe. Uh, you must be able to uh, disconnect your, uh, your, your device, and uh, this is really a baseline cybersecurity uh, principle. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now the next person I had on the list, thank you very much, was Wolfgang Kleinwachter, who I do not see. So, and then I also had uh, Ram Mohan, who I don't see, but I was told that there was another speaker from Affilius, um, uh, Melinda 
Uh, Melinda, do you have a microphone where you are? Yes, I do. Can you? Okay, please. Is that working? <laughs> Sorry. So it's Melinda Clem? Yes. It's Melinda Clem, yeah. Excellent. I'm the Vice President of Strategy at Affilius. Ram sends his regrets. Um, I'm going to just give a brief discussion of our focus in this area and try to cede some time uh, back to the discussion and problem resolution. Uh, so at Affilius, we see you know tremendous benefit in IOT but we also you know are realistic about the challenges uh, we've got those categorized in in five buckets um, security both the creation and effective implementation and, and practice of protocols interoperability privacy trust which we define as uh, global reach accessibility and um, and then finally the strategy around um, how you address orphaned technologies, right? We get rid of these things, you know, on an annual basis, if not more, what's the protocol for addressing these legacy devices? The focus at Affilius is uh, one where we're trying to, you know, we cooperate with both the civil society and the public sector, but the reality is that the internet advances at a rate that far exceeds um, any governance ability to keep up. Um, so that's why groups like this are, are important to address those challenges and step up um, and, and be nimble and flexible. And one of the ways we're focusing on that is raising awareness of the existing and proven technologies and standards that are out there that we can leverage. Um, we're not necessarily starting from zero on everything that we have today. Um, those specifically are ones that are in our bailiwick and we think can be leveraged are the DNS, um, you know, both the domain name system itself, the registration model of inherent security built in, they're proven, they're working, uh, core part of the internet infrastructure that can be leveraged. And secondly, DNSSEC, we've got built-in security uh, that works and it works throughout the, the ecosystem and both of those things are sitting there waiting and ready to go to be implemented in um, select IoT cases, largely for things that aren't uh, natively connected today and have some sort of a chip technology. Finally, we um, see a couple of factors of success and, and first and foremost, is providing the greatest benefit uh, for the user and having a user-centric model here, both in terms of um, giving them what they want, but then the ability to control their own data and privacy. And finally, that security and privacy is a responsibility that is shared uh, at each part of the ecosystem. In no case should it, it rest at any one person. It's all of our collective responsibility. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for having kept it re really quite quite short. And I will not spend a lot of time recapping what you all said because I'd really like, you know, although I did hear words like cooperation, I heard words of building on what we've got, things on enforcement and using fairly normal methods and principles, protocols, et cetera. So I think that's wonderful. And, 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 and it, is, it, it is actually a, a building of the new with a combining of the old and recognizing that. I'd like to, uh, yeah, one thing I forgot to do, which was to, to also introduce our rapporteur, uh, Ryan Triplett, who's there taking notes and will do a much better job afterwards sort of talking about what has been spoken of. I'd really like to open it up now to comments, to questions, to answers, to answers to some of the points like the strategy, the where we're going forward, the how we're moving forward, the people who want to say, yes, I'm going to help work on this part of it, which was also one of the questions that, that Martin asked. I'd like to ask the people to comment, try to keep it to under two minutes, if we can, so that over the next 20 minutes, we can get as many people as possible in. So, while I've been talking on, has anybody decided who wanted to be first to comment, question, or answer? And please introduce yourself when you speak, because I may not know you. And I keep talking, but no one has raised their hands yet. Okay, see if we can find someone that hasn't. Okay, so I've got one, and then two, so, and then three. Okay, I've got four now, so please, go ahead. Okay, good morning. Uh, thank you. I haven't got a microphone. Uh, yeah, it should Sorry, so, the yeah, microphone so is useful for remote participation. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I, I'll try to make it work. Um, good morning, my name is Jasper Panzer. I work at the Department for Digital in the United Kingdom. Um, really glad to be hearing about all the initiatives on, on IoT security that are happening, including this dynamic coalition uh, and, and many of the other um, um, uh, areas of work. I, um, I wanted to say that we in the UK, we take the security of IoT incredibly seriously and we are taking forward a number of, of initiatives and policy interventions in this area. And um, in particular, last month we have published a uh, code of practice uh, for manufacturers for the security of, of consumer IoT devices. Um, we believe this really moves the debate forward. And what the code does, it brings together um, what is widely considered good practice, so with the three top guidelines being no default passwords, um, implementing a vulnerability disclosure policy, and making software updatable. So, um, we believe this, this can help many of the existing initiatives on IoT security because we, we've, we've carried out a 18-month consultation process with industry, with civil society, um, with academia as well, and, and hopefully we hope that our code can, be, can inform the, maybe the dynamic coalition work. And so I'm happy to contribute um, to, this, um, to the security paragraph that you mentioned. Um, I will also be speaking about this tomorrow, so I don't want to speak much more about this now, but um, feel free to, to speak to me if you'd like to understand more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, please grab a microphone, introduce. Uh, I'm Mike Nelson, I work for Cloudflare, which is an internet security firm. Um, if you know about us, you probably know that we protect websites from DDoS attacks, but the truth is our future is in securing the Internet of Things. And uh, if you want to know more about that, there's a very good Wired article on Cloudflare and its overall strategy on the Internet of Things and what I like to call the Cloud of Things or the coat, the cloud of all things. <laughs> But I wanted to just uh, pick up on an, uh, a word that wasn't talked about very much except for Martin's introduction, which is, is ethical. I mean, the, the Dynamic Coalition has made that a very important overarching focus, but I think in order for that to be useful, we have to answer a very simple question. Uh, this is a question I heard in 1995 when I went to the first UNESCO conference on info ethics, and I heard it yesterday at the GovTech Summit. And the question is, whose ethics? In the UNESCO meeting, they debated for 15 minutes whether it was Kantian ethics or Hegelian ethics. And yesterday it was Confucian ethics, Baptist ethics, or utilitarian ethics. So any of the ethicists in the room care to take on that? And, and why talk ethics rather than human rights, which is actually better defined? Thank you. In fact, whenever I hear people talking about ethics, I go to the abstraction of human rights as defined, because that was as close as we got to agreeing on, on, on common ethics. So thank you for bringing that up. Would, Nigel, would you I allow you two next. fingers? Huh? Would you allow two fingers? Uh, yeah. Where were the two fingers from? <laughs> no. Okay, then I'll just put you, put you in, in the queue. Nigel, I had you next. You should never say two fingers to ethics, surely. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that's the sort of level of humor you get from ICANN. Uh, Nigel Hickson, ICANN. So, uh, I mean, the only point I had really is that I, I, I suppose this, this, this debate it, well, is, is, is very important on a number of levels. And one of the, one of the levels addressed by uh, Interpol uh, was, of course, the the specification, the security standards of the of the products, and and this this of course is is, is important. It's it's a, it's a debate that's been had now in in relation to Internet of Things, but it's a debate in the part in the past that's been held on on many other product areas. And I, I suppose the concern, having sort of been around this debate for the last thirty years or something, is is of regulating specifications for good reasons, uh, regulating or setting standards in terms of the security protocols, the re resilience, etc., etc., on products that are manufactured in Europe or the States or Canada or whatever. But how do we facilitate these to become global standards for the multitude of 
Internet of Things devices that are manufactured all over the world, where perhaps these standards and these protocols, etc., just will not be picked up. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. I had two more people, two more participant non-speakers, and then I had three of the speakers who have raised their hands. But I, but I, I saw the hand in that area, but didn't manage to identify who had been the hand. So, which one of you did raise your hand before, or right after Nigel? And then I know there was. Okay, I'll go. I'll go to to. Yeah, to, to you. Yes, please. And yeah, sorry, I'm not knowing or remembering people's no names in the Good moment. Good morning, everybody. My name is Monique Calisti, and I'm the director of Martel Innovate, a small company based in Zurich in Switzerland. Um, I think that um, it's very important that we gather input from several initiatives, and I'm very glad to have seen that several speakers are representing very different stakeholders. I think it's a huge responsibility. There is in Europe uh, quite a lot of work being done, uh, we have a um, an initiative called Next Generation Internet and an initiative that is called also um, Internet of Things um, Large Scale Experimentation. We have an IoT cluster and I think it's very important that your activities become visible to this audience and vice versa uh, because there is a lot of debate and the more uh, we are able to influence uh, the decision makers, the public authorities, the regulators, the more internet will change for the good. So yes, I think it's important to have all the players in the radar. Thank you, and, and I'm glad that we do. And one of the things in terms of visibility is indeed outputs from this dynamic coalition that sort of bring together all of that in, in a cooperative way. So thanks for bringing that up, and thanks for sort of putting the push on us slightly that we really do after three years of existence, and before that many years of existence, getting some outputs there. Now I had, Taylor, I saw your hand, and then Eden, and then Frederick all wanted to make comments. So go back to you, and then go back to non-speaker participants, if we have speakers, so please. Um, great, thanks very much. Uh, again, again, this is Taylor Bentley from the Government of Canada. So um, in our, a lot of the questions are about, you know, who decides and, and how do we figure it out? Well, you do it co collaboratively, of course. Um, but I think the answer, I mean, unfortunately, standards is just one of those things that's going to take a long time. Um, as I say, the design principles also are going to take a long time. This is like two or five years out. Uh, you know, if we're lucky, something catastrophic doesn't happen, but it could. And then you'll have pushes for regulation. Look at uh, fake news and what we heard yesterday, right? When issues happen and people aren't involved in the conversations, then. Uh, it forces a reactionary comment. So I think what we need is stop, to stop creating new things and provide guidance on how to navigate what's already there. I was really impressed with the UK approach, their mapping document. There are just so many principles out there. Um, let's maybe think of guidance, ways that we can guide, because I think what's in the Dynamic Coalition paper right now is good. Now how do we implement them and what's good guidance for how to actually do that? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I wanted to put my two fingers into the ethics uh, question um, and, and address that. Uh, data ethics is, is one of um, the things that I work on within the data policy team uh, at, the, at the World Economic Forum. And I think it's already been uh, uh, answered that, you know, I don't think Immanuel Kant or, or Georg Hegel will help us at the moment, but um, I think that uh, um, uh, a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, setting, uh, and in particular this group, because it is uh, open um, and, and, uh, and um, uh, not contained, uh, the process that we went through included primarily people chosen um, and, and, and very deliberately to be as uh, much of a cross-section in different parts, uh, even unexpected ones, but also to make sure that it was also open uh, to a broader conversation during the process of drafting. It was distributed to this group. Uh, there wasn't much feedback, but I hope that in uh, the coming month as I'll, I'll send around um, the near, well, the finalized 
sort of version um, that there'll be some more comments on that. So I think the answer is for ethics, it is who decides and that the answer, especially now more than any other time, is deliberately inclusive, uh, deliberately uh, geographically diverse and, uh, and ensuring that um, as many voices as possible are representative. That's not a definitive answer, but it is a, a process one. Thank you. So it sounds like we've got a coalition going, but perhaps we need to be more dynamic about it. Um, okay, Frederick, I had you next. Thank you, Avery. Um, well, fortunately, our Canadian friends already said most, most of what I was about to say. Canada is ahead of the curve. The, we're very proud to contribute to the multi-stakeholder group that we try to socialize. We start also in France. Uh, Senegal, so watch out. I mean, we, we're very happy to continue this conversation in a very multi-stakeholder model, so first. Second, thanks for mentioning UK and the Code of Conduct. That is really great. I would invite you to read it. We're perfectly aligned to this, uh, to this um, and it's a great piece of paper, and I agree with you. This is very concrete. We need to socialize those. Third, ethics. Yes, I mean, the conjunction of IoT and artificial intelligence is the key point here. I mean, we are disclosing a lot of information that we're not conscious that we disclose. And this completely huge amount of data is being analyzed by artificial intelligence. When you move in your house with your detector, you don't know, but you tell something to Nest or whoever can, can connect uh, and take this information. Same when you move in an airport. So this is where the ethical issue is because there will be decisions made by those um, connected devices by non-human agents. So that's really a critical point and I'm very happy that the Dynamic Coalition addressed this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I could take another participant or two's comment before returning to our, okay, please, okay, go one and then you're, okay, so I've got one and, 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 and two and then I'll go back to our speaker. Huh? Yeah, so, so please, please introduce yourself and please. Okay, uh, my name is Fia Lezhnevska. I'm uh, working at UCL on a large project uh, uh, on Internet of Things. Uh, we're actually doing a global governance in the Internet of Things uh, research uh, with myself and Dr. Madeline Carr here. Um, Wolfgang Kleinwachter was actually in another meeting which was on um, um, East-West um, commitment to multi-stakeholderism. And I think this was reflected yesterday with Macron's emphasis on the very divergent approaches to uh, governance and regulation, um, <clears throat> not just the internet, but the internet of things and AI. So when we're talking about privacy security, there are really very, very different uh, regional um, perspectives on how to address these things. So to achieve a sort of global approach on this European model, which is really being discussed here, uh, will take a high level of diplomatic effort, uh, not just working at the multi-stakeholder level, but across, uh, across states, between companies from different regions, um, and I, I just sort of wonder whether the Dynamic Coalition can really reflect and engage uh, with these more complex political economic issues. I, I, yes, it's interesting that you refer, referred back to Macron and his sort of multilateral as opposed to multi-stakeholder perspective. I would hope that the people from the multilateral state would try to interface with the multi-stakeholder as opposed to insisting on their own uh, silo, as it were. I had you, we're, we're, we're next, and please come to the microphone. Well, my name is Louis Pedraza. I'm just a curious citizen. I enjoy listening. Um, just a suggestion or a thought, uh, have you ever considered an expiration date to data collection or to connecting devices, just like credit cards where you opt in, but five years, they actually contact you uh, about whether you're interested in renewing. Because most of the time we tend to forget half the people we're given access to our data. So just a thought, suggestion. Thank you. Good question. Did any one of the speakers, especially a speaker that hasn't, okay, you, 
Would you like to, since you already sort of indicated yeah, no, something like that? Yeah, why not? I mean, that's that's a possibility. I think that I, we haven't figured out the technical means of doing this, but I think it's really essential to say that um, uh, throughout the life cycle of the, of the product, it has to be able to update and find when new vulnerabilities are found, then you need to be able to patch them regularly. You can't be just putting stuff on the market that can't be updated. That's really the bottom line, I think. And maybe that could be, uh, um, you know, having expiration dates on IoT connected devices. Yeah, why not? Thank you. I had Frederick and then Claudia both with short comments. Two figures, just and then just on that point. Two just two on that point. Okay. Two sentences. This is a fundamental microphone. This is a fundamental misperception that we somehow have to make the device the solution. We can use gateways that control the device and have five cent devices that don't have the ability to be updated, but only connect to the net through a gateway that can be. And, uh, and that's a much more economical and flexible way of doing it. Okay, thank you. I have a quick comment from Frederick, a quick comment from Claudia, and then back to Martin to close the session. Okay, so quickly, yes, uh, I agree with what has been said. We got this in an online trust alliance. We should be able to control uh, the device or the connections, whatever it is. And the, the problem is, indeed, those days you got devices that continue to co uh, change data when you don't know that they do because they're broken and they continue to do what they do. So I agree with you. you consumers and users need to to perfect control of the data. We got this covered in 080. Thank you. Thank you. Claudia? Um, yes, well, uh, two quick comments. One is uh, concerning the, the, um, the, the fact that the dynamic coalition should be interactive with, uh, uh, you know, the political environment and I think that we cannot really ignore that because in any case they're coming up with laws that we all have to respect and abide so we, we need to uh, certainly respond to this regional different regional perspective even if we are um, you know in, an, in another uh, setting or uh, and then the, the other thing I, I agree that we need to control as well the devices but on the other hand you have also uh, laws that are being drafted and created that sometimes don't allow you to do that so uh, it, it depends how these laws are crafted uh, thank you problem with these sessions is it takes about an hour to get the conversation going um, <laughs> It's, it's yours, Martin, to, uh, to, to, to wind it up and, and close it. And perhaps you want to mention something about the part you're taking in the, uh, the overall main session, because uh, the Dynamic Coalition is part of that one too, right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for contributing. Uh, uh, this is what we try to do, bring people together in a room that are interesting already. So we've had the discussion. Uh, explicit invitation is to... Uh, if you want to participate in either the ethical paper or the, uh, the uh, internet secure, uh, IoT security paper to uh, provide your business card, uh, we'll make sure that this helps, uh, this works. Um, the other thing is uh, very much that uh, with this room, we also do have a number of governments because they're interested uh, government organ governmental organizations this is how these things get out it's industry that is engaging uh, what michael brought the point of of, of ethics and 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 Adam. Uh, it it is an ongoing discussion and how do we tackle this in the right way because we all want in the end an internet we can rely upon that we can trust uh, it will never be perfect, but it should be trustworthy, and uh, the Internet of Things is an important role in that. So, having uh, heard the the contributions, also from from Greg from from Europol, he was talking from a law enforcement perspective. But he also indicated he's also part of an initiative working with ENISA uh, on, on uh, network information security policies, on, on measures uh, with, with RIPE NCC, the technical community, on what can be happening on a technical level. And uh, we see these discussions back on ITF as well, who've been deeply involved in, in these sessions before. Today we don't have a speaker from that. I think uh, Melinda clearly indicated that uh, part of industry is really seeing so how can we help the user to make this and, and, and the, the business to make this a trusted uh, offer uh, by looking at security but she also mentioned privacy as this is part of the package that you need to offer nowadays as well um, uh, very clearly um, 
Uh, Justin, thank you very much. And the, the nice thing between UK and Canada is we see two governments taking this very seriously and coming from a slightly different angle. And I think together we'll find a way where uh, also useful government support of these kind of processes will come back. So appreciated that as well. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, if you have any links to initiatives you're aware of, we're not aware of yet, please let us know. We'll include it in the report. It will reflect, be reflected on the IoT website, which is also indicated in the slide uh, thingy, which, which you can find online. Other sessions coming up that may be of your interest include uh, tomorrow uh, at 10, 10, there's a session in room nine organized by this gentleman uh, with as much hair as I have. This is the only way I can uh, afford to say it. Uh, uh, it's an open forum where uh, multiple play players will talk about uh, IoT security aspects and how we can, uh, how would you say that, solidify towards the future. We know we have things to do there. Uh, another session this afternoon is uh, on the economics and uh, the development issues of IoT. Uh, that's in the main room at three o'clock. Uh, we'll also uh, highlight uh, how IoT uh, adds to uh, achieving uh, s uh, sustainable development goals. And then tomorrow at 11.50, I want to point you at uh, Best Practice Forum, in which uh, Michael will participate as well, uh, which will be on uh, uh, artificial intelligence and the enablers of IoT and, and big data that feed into that. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, don't forget to leave your business card, indicate on it ethics or secure, and uh, your links. And uh, looking forward to see you next time.